A long-awaited public inquiry is now underway in Ottawa. It's looking into alleged foreign electoral interference in the 2019 and 2021 federal elections. Commissioner Marie-José Og leading the proceedings. The Commission lawyers and I are neutral and impartial. We represent the public interest and our goal is to uncover the truth, whatever it may be. You will note throughout its work that the Commission Council will work together with the lawyers of the participants, be they parties or interveners. This is standard practice in the Commission of Inquiry. Everyone must work towards the same goal, understanding what happened, learning from it, and making recommendations for the future. The inquiry's first item of business is to figure out what it can and cannot talk about publicly. And for more on the first day of hearings, the CBC's Karina Roman joins me now. Okay, Karina, what did we hear today? So in that opening statement that Justice Og uh, gave, she talked about how serious these allegations are of political uh, and foreign interference, uh, whether we're talking China, Russia, India, or another state or non-state actor. And so she said it is going to be their task to figure out what happened and what the repercussions were for our elections, uh, the flow of information, what was the flow of information like within the government. Um, and that's what she said was where the main big challenge for her commission uh, comes into play, because this is a public inquiry, but so much of the information before it is going to be classified. Uh, and so they have to figure out how uh, they go about figuring out what remains secret and what can be made public with the goal of being as transparent as possible. And one of the commission lawyers uh, today said, David, that uh, so far, to date, 80% of the submissions that have come to the uh, commission, to the inquiry that they've received, are of a classified nature, and 80% of those are top secret or higher uh, in terms of classification. So that just gives you the sense of the scope of what they're dealing with. Uh, and so they'll be hearing from national security lawyers, experts this week, but also towards the end of the week from the CSIS director, from the public safety minister. Uh, and so that's this week. Uh, then in March, we get into the substance of the whole foreign interference allegations. Uh, there'll be further hearings in September. And then she explained that her final report is due at the end of the year. Okay, it's day one. A lot of controversy led us to here. And as I said, it's day one of this inquiry, and already uh, we're seeing some controversy. Uh, Karina, so tell us about what's going on. Well, let's start with the Conservative Party, which is upset that it was not given full standing at this commission. Now, no, no political party was. The NDP also only has intervener uh, status. Uh, but the government of Canada has full status, and the Conservatives are arguing that that is essentially the same as the Liberal Party. Uh, but uh, Justice Ugg not agreeing with that uh, and, and saying that she is concerned about, you know, politicizing this commission, and so she did not give them uh, a full status, uh, which would have allowed them to see all the information, not just what's made public, uh, and also to question witnesses. But today, in her opening statement, Justice Ogden was very clear that she doesn't want this to become an adversarial process. And so you get a sense that perhaps that's also part of her reasoning. Uh, so the Conservatives saying they're not sure whether how, how willing they are to participate in a process that they now say has been undermined uh, by that ruling that, that they cannot have full standing. Uh, the other problem uh, is that there's a, a sense of worry with the diaspora communities uh, that their security and safety uh, might be at risk if they decide to, to participate and certainly to uh, be witnesses um, and submit information. And the justice did try to address that today, uh, talking about how uh, at, if there's a request for some kind of protection of identity or of information given, uh, that she will consider those requests. And it may lead to uh, going in camera in some considerations. And she said that she will make those decisions before anyone takes the stand so that they know ahead of time uh, what the parameters are. Uh, not sure, however, whether that provides the level of reassurance that those people are looking for. Okay, Karina, thank you so much. That's the CBC's Karina Roman here in Ottawa.
And we're going to talk more about that last issue because a coalition of human rights groups representing some diaspora groups targeted by China are threatening to boycott the public inquiry into foreign interference. That's if the commissioner allows three politicians with alleged ties to Beijing to have full standing, meaning they can cross-examine witnesses and gain access to confidential testimony. Mehmet Todi is the government coordinator for the Uyghur Canadian Society, one of the groups threatening to withdraw, and he joins me in the studio now. Mehmet, it's good to see you again. Thank you. So you're, you, you're threatening to withdraw. When, what, is, what would it take to keep you in this process? Uh, uh, to be uh, clear, we are not threatening, just uh, uh, we have a concern. Okay. And as you highlighted, and the safety and the security concern, at the same time, there is a strong allegations on certain individuals from the credible national security agency in Canada, and it was on media. And so uh, we also uh, have been a witness on these individuals, especially uh, the some uh, members of Senate. Uh, they are echoing exactly the same narrative from Beijing. And when they dismissed the Uyghur genocide in the, Sen in the Senate version discussion, for example, and for that reason, we have a huge concern. And as long as those allegations uh, stand against them, and as long as they are not coming up clean, just we are not uh, feel, feeling ready to make ourselves available before them to question us. So the, the, the three <coughs> politicians we're talking about here are Senator Wu, who's, an, who's a senator uh, that has, has been accused of being sympathetic yep. to China at yep. minimum, Han Dong, the independent MP who was <laughs> caught up in the revelations uh, last spring, and Michael Chan, yep. who is now a municipal politician in Ontario. Yep. You're not willing to be cross-examined by them, have them have access to any of the information you may present? They may have access because our information is public right. and allegations are public and our experiences are known. We issued the report. It is on public. The third, our concern is, <clears throat> and if, if we look at the statements they made, for example, Handong, the Ontario Member of Parliament, and for Uyghur Canadian communities experienced uh, awful uh, atrocities and uh, disconnect their family members since five, six years, and Uyghur Canadian of Saint Jail is in Chinese jail since 17 years, and the atrocity crime is already acknowledged by the parliament as a genocide in Canada. Right. And if you look at the whole uh, the record of Handong, he did not raise a single time about the Uyghur genocide issue. Actually, he did not participate. And especially in uh, last year, February 1st, when whole uh, the House voted for the resettlement of 10,000 Uyghur refugees. He was at the Parliament just before the motion, and after the motion, he did not vote. He did not participate. Right. And so, if you look at the, the narrative of uh, Senator uh, Yuan Pao Wu, when he dismissed the Senate version of Uyghur genocide, and it was exactly the same narrative he used uh, as the Chinese mission at the United Nations uh, attacked our Ambassador uh, Bob Ray. So, so how do we reconcile this? Because this inquiry is to look into groups like the Uyghurs who are vulnerable to foreign interference by a foreign state and, and are deserving of protection to operate uh, you know, in this country and in the political process. But these three men have been accused of at least being complicit, if not having benefited from foreign interference. There's a series of unresolved allegations out there. So the two rights are in conflict. So how do we reconcile this in a democracy like Canada where you want your concerns heard but they also want the opportunity to have their names cleared? Uh, they should be resigned from their post and uh, they should go through uh, the, the, the court process or whatever, just clean up their name. And uh, they cannot hold the, those positions and while the serious allegations still stand against them. And we, we are not the one who laid down these allegations. It was on media and it was mm -hmm. from the, the, the government agencies and the security, national security agencies. And for that reason, it is their job. They have every platform. One is MP. Uh, they have a strong public platform. So you say resign their position. You mean their political office yeah, political or resign office. from their positions? Uh, their, their political standing? office at the same time, the standing, uh, they, they should re recuse themselves. Okay, but I, I, I don't believe we're going to see a resignation by Han Dong in time yep. to satisfy or, or you know, uh, Senator Wu or by Michael Chan. So, so how, how does this inquiry proceed? I mean, and just as Ugg said today, she'll use her discretion in regards to how the inquiry plays out to ensure that people who think they're vulnerable are protected and maybe certain information uh, might be controlled. I mean, is the judge's good word enough? Uh, we will see, and this is just the beginning. And uh, the, this is the, the process for a commissioner to learn the many things, mm -hmm. 
and uh, it takes time. We have uh, nearly a year time uh, before seeing the final report. And uh, the, during this time, uh, I think uh, the, the view of commissioner and the judgment of the commissioner will change because she will learn many things. And uh, this is, as commissioner said, this is a serious issue for Canada. It is for our future, our national security, at the same time, safety and security of Canadians, like we were Canadians. And uh, since long time, uh, despite our serious concern we raised since decades, government did not take any action. Right. We came to this point. Now, huge files are before us, and we are going to study it, and we are going to find out the solution. The most importantly, uh, that those people are subject of that allegation should resign and a giveaway for independent inquiry or the process to continue. Right. Now, they all say they've done nothing wrong, right? And, and they all say they're, they're good, loyal Canadians, and, and, and the allegations against them are false. And, and so they, they want to have, they have been granted standing at this inquiry for those reasons. And, and as I understand it, uh, because they have official standing and not just intervener status, they'll have cross-examination rights and access to some of the confidential mm -hmm. and perhaps even the classified information within various limits. Um, how I, I again see a total impasse there mm -hmm. because I can't see them with their reputations and careers on the line giving that up um, in, in this process. So how do you, I know you took quibble with my use of the word threatening mm -hmm. earlier, but what if you don't get what you want here? Do you participate uh, or do you boycott? We would like we, we, we would like to see till Wednesday afternoon and to see the whole process, how it plays out. Then uh, Wednesday afternoon, most likely we are going to withdraw if uh, nothing changes. And because uh, there is, as I said, uh, there are serious allegations against those individuals that they, 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 they have d developed a deep relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm. And if we look at their actions, not words, they are in line with the, the, word, the narratives of Chinese Communist Party in some cases. So, so short of them ac accepting these conditions you've laid out, is there something the judge can do to keep your, co your organization as part of, of this inquiry uh, by Wednesday? Yes, we, we make that decision by ourselves. We of will course. withdraw. Well, is yeah. there something you can hear from her, from yeah. Justice Og, that would satisfy the concerns you have? That maybe not this remedy the, of them yeah. resigning. Is there something she can offer you? Yeah, of in course. In terms of how she'll run uh, this, uh, that uh, would uh, make that's, you feel That's why we are waiting until Wednesday. Right. So what are you hoping to hear from her on Wednesday? This is uh, her, what I'm wondering about. Just we don't want to be examined and cross-examined by those three individuals, as long as that allegation holds against them. Right. And if they, if they clean up their names, and I would uh, love to sit down with them to have a coffee in some way. But these, these are the strong allegations, and Uyghur Canadians have been victim of transnational repression. And now when we hear the media and uh, the, the, from the government agencies the alleging that they have a deep ties with the Chinese Communist Party, and they repeat, they repeat the same narrative as came out from Beijing, and mm -hmm. that concern is still valid from us. So when you say we will withdraw on Wednesday, does we just mean the Uyghur Canadian Society, Uyghur, or is there more? Uyghur Rights more... Advocacy Project. Right. Just I have to correct. Uyghur okay, Rights Advocacy sorry. Project is going to withdraw from the process, and we are not going to participate. Okay, and will any other, because I know there's sort of an umbrella uh, yeah. gr uh, series of groups there. Has anyone else other than? Uh, the, those organizations, they will make their own decision, and uh, the risk uh, that experienced by the diaspora community is not the same. And Uyghur Canadians are the seriously affected by the transnational oppression. And for that reason, uh, we have every reason to consider uh, every individuals who are going to question us and who are going to see the, the threats and uh, that, that we are facing, if there is any uh, threat or any information about the possible threat target, targeted us from the government. So we don't want them to see, we don't want them to have access to those information as well. Mehmet Todi with the Uyghur Rights Advocacy Project, thank you so much uh, for your time today. You're welcome.